Marek Zhukovsky, former Polish ambassador to Ukraine, is joining us right now. Good morning, sir. Delighted to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks so much for this invitation. Uh, so let me uh, start by asking about these recent Ukrainian attacks on Russian refineries. Um, is Ukraine somewhat emboldened by what some politicians such as David Cameron said, that now um, the, the, the weapons uh, provided uh, by Ukraine's allies could be used on the Russian territory? Or is, is it sort of uh, Ukraine's um, you know, sort of sovereign and independent decision where they're planning to do so earlier? And how effective is that? I think uh, I think that uh, from the from Ukrainian point of view, it's it's mean uh, we could consider in which way it is effective in uh, Ukrainian counterattack against uh, Russia. It's effective, and uh, what is uh, the case that even I study this specific uh, Western, including American concern on uh, how these attacks on refineries will influence the world market on uh, Brent or crude oil. It's nothing happened. The, 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 the prices of oil is, uh, is, is uh, slowing down. Also, it's, uh, it, it has no special uh, connection with the, with the world, world what market? I think it's a it's a continuation in a specific way of a global Western sanction against uh, Russian economy, including uh, oil and gas uh, industry. All right, sir. So can you help us understand whether these attacks are effective in a sense of hindering Russia's push into Kharkiv? Because we do know that there's more advancement potentially coming, as stated by the Ukrainian president. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks so much. It's uh, of course it's, it's it's connected for maybe in in not in the direct way because it's the, the, this war. We are now in this specific stage of the war of uh, attrition, and it's like Klaus Evitz formula. Also, we should remind that we now we say that still it's it's foggy, uh, foggy planning, foggy situation. Also. Maybe it's not connected directly with this uh, Russian attack on the Kharkiv region, but the war of, the, of attrition has this uh, really specific that uh, every day we could, and Ukrainians could, uh, it, it's unlikely, of course, could expect uh, attacks from every corner of uh, Russian-Ukrainian border. And uh, it's only from Russian side the continuation of the specific philosophy. The more Ukrainian land they kept, uh, they could kept uh, by military means, not uh, a peace negotiation that could be close in Russian mentality, in Russian planning, uh, close to the to the winning this war. Right. Uh, speaking about uh, the uh, renowned offensive uh, on the um, renewed offensive on the Kharkiv region, um, I wonder: um, Do you think it's too little, too late when it comes to the uh, Western arms provided um, to Ukraine? I mean, they were waiting for it and waiting for it, and now supposedly they're on on its way. However, in the meantime, Russia has decided to uh, double its efforts um, in that particular region, sort of almost opening like a new front, right? So, so what happens now? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with this thesis that uh, it's uh, a bit too late, but of course it's for also military experts uh, how uh, this uh, a, a bit too late delivery of, 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 of weapons from uh, from Europe and the United States could uh, really worsen in a really deep sense could worsen the Ukrainian position on in, in, on the front but in uh, foreign politics it's not only this war is not only on uh, on, on weapons of course it's it's a main uh, topic now. But we should see that if this is, there is a war of attrition, of course, we should see both in the short term and also in the long term perspective what is uh, what's happening in Russia. 
the practically or theoretically we see the, 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 the slightly successes of, uh, of Russia in this Russian-Ukrainian front. But Russia, as we saw a few months ago, is an unfunctional state with uh, disrupted economy. The economy is producing only the products for war waging by, by Putin. How long uh, Russian state could function as a state uh, having only one political and military project as war, no, nobody knows. But uh, Perhaps as long as they have Chinese support. <laughs> Uh, also, of course, they try to find uh, many allies, but these allies are not so strong and I think uh, convincing in the support like uh, Global West, like the uh, United States, Poland or, or, or uh, European Union. I think uh, these aspects, uh, of course, there is no equivalence, no balance. We should have uh, more deeply uh, analysis that still it's, uh, the situation is dynamic. But we see how uh, Ukrainians are really deeply convinced that it's a really big, uh, great war for them. It's uh, no, it's no peace uh, without, in fact, winning uh, the Russian on the front. So, sir, you were talking about the disruption in the Russian economy, and I would like to draw attention to the recent political shape up inside the country. Uh, Vladimir Putin seemed to have put an economist onto the position of a defense minister. Do you think these two are related in any way, shape, or form? I um, I, I try to be not a Kremlin Kremlinologist, like uh, it's a popular also this. Uh, Shifting one minister to the other, I think it's not so important for, for, for the way of waging war by Putin. He is a main actor. Uh, the, the others is only uh, second range uh, politicians even in Russia. Marek Zhukovsky, former Polish ambassador to Ukraine. Thank you, sir, for being with us this morning and for your insights. Really appreciate Thanks it, so sir. Much.